Can you exfiltrate data using just pings? Let's find out. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is your Payload Minute. Today, I'm checking out ICMP Data Exfiltration by TWD. It's a really unique exfiltration payload for the USB rubber ducky that targets Debian-based Linux distributions to extract data using the ping command and a few other utilities. So let's take a look. The payload works by executing a bash script, which converts the target data into base 64. Then it chunks it into 16 byte fragments. Those fragments are then transmitted over internet control message protocol or ICMP using the ping command. If we dig into the code, we'll see that the crux of it happens here on line 40 towards the bottom where the no hop command is used to run the exfiltration process in the background. It also uses environment variables for bash and user, so it should run just fine on any Debian-based system. It also takes into account the label of the USB rubber ducky flash drive, the target file, and the listener, which are all defined previously in the payload. What's more, the standard error and output are nullified by ending the command with ampersand greater than slash dev slash null, which means that no output goes on the screen. And finally, if you look closely, the command begins with a space, which means that it won't be included in the bash history, meaning this is a little stealthier, a little bit more difficult for the blue team to investigate. So that's kind of a fun tip right there. To use this payload, just spin up a listener on your server. An example using the TCP dump tool is provided, as well as a little Ruby script, which will gather those fragments and piece them back together. The Ruby script scans each of the packets for base64 encoded strings, and then those strings are, when they're found, they're decoded from base64 and printed out and saved in a little loot.txt file. What's unique about this payload is that it evades common firewall restrictions by using ICMP protocol, which is a commonly used protocol for diagnostics purposes. While these packets are very small, they often pass through routers and firewalls as they aren't either of the most common protocols, TCP and UDP. I like that this payload is really easy to configure. It uses defined statements that let you quickly state your target file, your host, your listener. It also has some very specific attention to detail in that it will ensure that the caps lock key is off while doing the keystroke injection. It then restores the keyboard lock state to whatever it was before the payload was executed. And that's something that I don't often see. It's a, a pretty nice technique that could make other payloads even more robust. So something to think about. For anyone interested in this technique, take a look at the usage of the save host keyboard lock state and restore host keyboard lock state commands, as well as the keyboard and numlock commands that are wrapped in if statements. Mad props to TWD on this unique exfiltration payload. You can find it and many more in Payload Hub over at hack5.org or in the USB rubber ducky GitHub repo. So what do you guys think? Is there anything that you'd like to change to make this payload even better? Let me know in the comments. And with that, I'm Darren Kitchen, Hack5 Darren everywhere online. Until next time, this has been your Payload Minute. Trust your technolust.